Have you ever been a part of an exclusive club? Maybe a society or, or something where you had to go through certain rituals in order to make it in? Maybe you uh, have been on the outside of something like this looking in. Things like these, this exist, right? And, and maybe uh, it makes you angry because you're not a part of these clubs and you've been treated poorly by people that are in these societies or clubs in the past. Maybe it's not an official club, but it's exclusive nonetheless. Before Christianity began, Judaism was a fairly exclusive club. There were lots of rules and regulations to be a part of this club. Uh, there was a temple that was designated as the house of God, uh, where the very presence of God dwelt. And although the very God that the Jews worshipped had set up some allowances for others to be able to worship, at least in some form, humanity has a hard time opening up to these exclusive things to outsiders. Think about it. You, you wouldn't want someone taking your starting position if they just showed up one day um, and they hadn't gone through the workouts, they hadn't gone to practice, they hadn't been a part of the team. You wouldn't want them just to show up on game day and take your spot. If you, if you went through some really hard things to earn your place in a certain honorary society, you would be pretty miffed if that society's standards began to drop off. And you might even exclaim, Oh, so they're just letting anyone in here now. Uh, when I was 19, I, I shipped off to boot camp to earn my place as a Marine. To earn my right to be called Marine. The thing was, I was not only becoming a Marine and enduring basic training, but I was also going to be heading off to Navy, the Navy School of Music after I was done with basic and MCT training. And so, if you can imagine, with me for a second, it's not that hard, but, but think about the question that you think I probably received most often. Especially when I said, well, I'm, I'm in the Marine, I'm in the band. And people would usually follow that up with, well, are you a real Marine? Uh, did you even go to boot camp? Do you even lift, bro? Uh, like, that's, that's how it felt, and that's, that's what they would ask, things like this. And so, to which I would reply, yes. Uh, I am a Marine. Uh, the field band goes through boot camp and I went through MCT training. I've gone through the same basic training that every Marine goes through. I qualified on the rifle range, humped a pack through the desert, camped out in the cold. And I'm honestly thankful that these questions came up. Uh, but, but why do you think this question is so important to people? Are you a real Marine? Because even someone on the outside looking in on someone serving their country deems it pretty important to know that those who are serving their country, a Marine or any other member of the armored forces, uh, goes through that, that proper training. And it's also important to those who are fighting alongside to know that your battle buddy, your fire squad, your unit understands the rules of engagement and knows how to handle themselves in the heat of combat. There's a certain exclusivity that is natural to life, that we all adhere to. It gives those on the inside a sense of belonging and pride, and often it goes at the expense of outsiders. So imagine Peter's surprise when God tells him to live, a, live contrary to the rules that uh, he had always adhered to, the rules by which Jews everywhere were expected to follow in order to worship the God in the Bible. Peter has a vision. And this particular vision makes it clear that the world as he knows it is about to change forever. In Acts chapter 10, verses 9 through 23, we, we catch up with Peter as he receives this vision from God. And it says, The next day as Cornelius' his messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles and birds. Then a voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared, 
I've never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice, voice spoke again, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? Just then, the men of that men that were sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. So Peter went down and said, I'm the man you are looking for. Why have you come? They said, We were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night. The next day he went with them and accompanied by some of the brothers from Joppa. A couple things I want to just point out to you guys. If it's not clear through this story, maybe you don't understand the context. The world was about to change. Peter's world and our world was about to change. Because what you might not understand is that it was a huge deal for a Jew to invite a non-Jew to be a house guest. This was proof that Peter now understood that not only were the things like food no longer a dividing point or a point that excludes others from the worship of God, but now people's who were unclean by the law, were now invited into the family of God. And so Peter invited them in to be his guests. This was the beginning of your legacy. If, if you're not Jewish by descent, um, as a non-Jew myself, and, and for most of us, we're not, we were not welcome at that, before this. And now we are we're welcomed in to be a part of the family, to take part in the exclusive worship of the God of the Bible, to come as we were and learn about Jesus. Ritual free, ready to take on Jesus as our Savior, to be baptized as an outward expression of an inward change. Praise God for his love and redemption for all humanity. It was made clear because of Peter's vision. That God's plan wasn't just for one nation, but it was for all peoples of all nations to take part in the redemption story. 